And we have uh, Dr. John in the studio from Creation Ministries International. And uh, if you do have any questions for Dr. John, please just remember this phone number to send an SMS through to us. And we can answer it right now. Any questions? 0401 949 949. Good afternoon, Dr. John. Good afternoon, Mick. It's great to have you back in the studio again. <laughs> Haven't seen you here Haven't for a little seen, while. No, it's been a while, but uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's good to be back. Yeah, and it's it's been really cool speaking to a few of the other guys in New Zealand and up in Queensland and yeah, yeah. well, look, of I, I, think, I think it's great that uh, that we have the other speakers uh, on here. You yeah. know, it, it really is good. It gives it gives your listeners a um, a, a very wide variety to hear. People who are experts in different fields, and they're all uh, they're all Christians because in their field they know that what the Bible says is true. Yeah. yeah. Now you, you talk about experts in their field. Um, th- there's been a few uh, experts in their field arguing with one particular person over the last few years. We've probably heard his name numerous times, Richard Dawkins, and uh, he has argued with Christians a lot. And Dr. John. Um, you've got some very interesting news about him. Yeah, well, look, there was a great article about uh, Dawkins on the uh, Creation Ministries website only uh, a week or so ago. And, uh, I mean, he's the uh, the world's best-known atheist and evolutionist. I mean, he's always been out there. But uh, he was interviewed on the, uh, the BBC over Easter. Yep. And uh, he claims now to be a cultural Christian. <laughs> okay, that, that's that's interesting. I, that, that, I wonder what a cultural Christian really is. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, um, yeah, you, you might well ask that question, yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, in that article, they did because, of course, um, uh, does that mean he's no longer an atheist? No way. You know, I mean, um, uh, he doesn't believe in uh, things that he regards as fairy stories, like the virgin birth and the resurrection and so on. And uh, I mean, that's what he was being interviewed at Easter for. But uh, so he he regards them as nonsense. Well, I mean they're they're two of the uh, the most fundamental Christian beliefs. So mm. you know if you don't do that, uh, don't believe that. How do you call yourself any sort of Christian? Yeah. And of course, Dawkins is not a Christian by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, what he said on the uh, the interview is that he actually likes. A lot of the uh, Christian aspects of uh, British society. Yeah, what do you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he likes the old hymns. Uh-huh. Uh, he likes <laughs> he likes singing Christmas carols. Wow! Now, you know, I mean, when you think about it, uh, uh, the Christmas—I can't imagine why he would like singing Christmas uh, Christmas carols. Well, because he's worshiping the Lord, and it really does make you feel good, regardless. Well, well yeah, but the <laughs> the Christmas carols are absolutely full of. Um, you know, gospel truths and things like that. So how you could sing them without believing them is uh, beyond me. Mm. And, of course, he also likes the uh, the old Christian architecture of England, you know, the uh, the old cathedrals and the old churches. But all of those were built with the faith of believers, you know, mm. and they put their money in just like, you know, the Israelites of old put in their gold and silver to, you know, uh, make all the things for the temple and so on. Then uh, Christian people have put their money in uh, to build the uh, cathedrals and things. I mean, they just haven't come miraculously out of the blue. And, of course, Dawkins also says he likes the ethos of uh, British society. And, of course, that grew out of its Christian roots. You know, I mean, uh, it's uh, systems of justice and government and uh, courtesy. Uh, I mean, they've all been corrupted in recent times, but to some degree they're still in existence. And uh, Dawkins loves that aspect of British society. But it wouldn't even be there if it wasn't for Christianity. And the writer of the uh, the article on the CMI website put it brilliantly, I thought. He said... Dawkins does everything he possibly can to uh, to chop down the tree, but he still wants to live in its shade and eat, <laughs> eat its fruit. <laughs> I thought that was really, really well put. 
Yes. He loves the culture of Christianity and he sees it as much more acceptable than any other religious uh, cultures. But, of course, you can't be a cultural Christian uh, any more than you can be a culturist uh, in uh, any of the religions because religion and culture can't be separated. The, the culture stems from the religion undergirding it. And we, when we look our, around our world today, uh, we can see what most of us would see as a serious downturn in our uh, supposed Christian culture. And that's really because there's been a, uh, a serious rejection of the, uh, the religion undergirding it. Mm. And inevitably, that, uh, that outworks itself in everyday life. And uh, when we look at some of the things happening today, we can see the results of that rejection. You know, the, uh, the, the, Bible, uh, the Bible tells us that the purpose of the commandment was love. Now, mm. I mean, love gets uh, corrupted these days too. But another way of looking at the Christian ethos is uh, do unto others as you would them do unto you. And uh, we, we re- both of those are essentially the same because love does no harm to a neighbour. That's what the, uh, the Bible tells us, that mm-hmm. uh, love, you know, the God kind of love, is the fulfilment of the law. And if you reject the, uh, those principles, what you get is what we see in society uh, now. You know, the focus has become entirely on self. You know, the attitude now is... Uh, no one's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to uh, do whatever I want. And we see the results of that all around us. And we shouldn't be surprised at the events that we see in Bondi, for example, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, a lot of the, uh, the recent events, uh, you know, the uh, murderous attacks on women in particular. I mean, we had another one in the last day, you know. So, uh, so. Really, these are the things that are a result of our departure from, uh, from you know, e- even things like uh, kids getting mowed down by drunk drivers or drug drivers, uh, drug divers or drivers or whatever. Uh, th- they're not isolated incidents. You know, they really stem from the fam- same fundamental source. And uh, you can protest all you like, but uh, you know, and, and they can have rallies and protests and whatever. But really, unless we uh, attack it at its root, then mm. we're not going to get anywhere because the fundamental root is the rejection of the law and the ethos that are the foundation of our Christian society. Yep. And uh, when you when you do that, which our our society has done. Uh, you get all of these problems that are coming to the fore now, you know. So uh, it, it, it's it's actually a very interesting philosophical exercise if you have a look at what uh, Richard Dawkins actually said mm. in that uh, interview, because he would regard himself as um, typifying the uh, the perfect scientist. You know, he he only deals with uh, the facts, you know, what he can see and uh, measure and weigh and verify and prove and explain. You know, everything is uh, absolutely material. We're all electrons and protons and quarks and, you know, all of the other sort of things that uh, uh, make up uh, make up our, our world. And there's nothing for him outside of the material. Now, that's what people like Dawkins proclaim all the time, you mm-hmm. know, that there is no uh, material, uh, nothing apart from the material. Mm. But uh, he's yeah, an Englishman. Say, oh, I won't believe it until I see it. That's right. And uh, he's a, an Englishman living in the country that really did develop the, uh, the greatest system of justice and government that the world's ever seen. And uh, they exported it to every corner of the globe. You know, they used to say in uh, Victorian times that the sun never set on the British Empire. Mm. Now, sure, it had plenty of failings, uh, uh, but I doubt if any of us would uh, view a culture anywhere in the world as better than British culture at its best. You know, the... um, what what they had was great, you know. It, mm. Its parliament boasted statesmen and people of integrity, you know, and abuses like the uh, slave trade were ultimately voted down by Christian men of principle. Uh, justice was available to all. 
the, uh, the police were firm and courteous. Bribery and corruption were frowned upon and they were, call- they were called out. People enjoyed the best society could offer up until that time. And Dawkins appreciates what he was born into and he sees it as having much of the uh, excellence that uh, he admires. Mm. But if he were really true to his beliefs, he'd have to acknowledge that the most desirable society that he loves, you know, actually uh, was founded on, uh, on fantasy. <laughs> because from his point of view, uh, none of the principles on which it's based have any foundation in truth. Mm. So uh, well, what on earth could he have founded it on? You know, here he is. He, he's saying that it's uh, um, the uh, the laws that its uh, leaders enacted, even though they produced a wonderful social fabric, they were just uh, sort of based on the musings of a Middle Eastern shepherd who saw a burning bush and thought God was talking to him, you know. Mm. I mean, he, he, he's basing what he believes on uh, what he sees as a total delusion. Yeah. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Yeah. You're on 94.9 this afternoon. It's 26 minutes past four. We're with Dr. John from Creation Ministries International. We'll be back soon. If you do have any questions for Dr. John, send them through to our text line 0401 949 949. It's here on 94.9. It's 23 minutes to five and we have Dr. John in the studio from Creation Ministries International who do actually have a website, creation.com, with thousands of pages of information. You can get all sorts of questions answered there. But if you've got any questions, we'd love you to send them through. Just send them to our text line 0401 949 949. Now, Dr. John, we've been talking about Richard Dawkins who now claims to be a cultural Christian, which is kind of interesting. One of these guys that only believes in what he can see. Um, interestingly, though, there's so much science that can't be seen, yet he still follows the science. Well, yes, yeah, so so he says, and 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 he does. But of course, when you uh, when you think about it, and this is uh, really one of the uh, the reasons for. Uh, Creation Ministries' uh, existence, really. I mean, um, uh, we're passionate at uh, pointing out the flaws in the beliefs that uh, people like uh, Dawkins really do hold. I mean, he calls himself a cultural Christian, but he's he's got to be saying that uh, uh, the ethical society that he uh, believes in and lives in uh, well, since you departed from that a bit now, but uh, mm. uh, the, the the perfect ethical British society as it was, not perfect, but, uh, you know, very, very, uh, very, very good. Uh, it, it must have grown out of, uh, you know, nonsense really, you know, just mm. uh, Moses, uh, you know, writing you know, uh, five ethical books and, and making out that God gave him, you know, uh, some commandments on tablets of stone and things mm. like that, you know. So that's what uh, what he's saying. He, he really believes that it was uh, nonsense. But, you know, we do exist to uh, then have a look at what, Dawkins and uh, his uh, um, you know fellow travellers talk about when they they claim that uh, they've got it all together that they only believe in the uh, the material existence and um, that they think that uh, uh, their beliefs about millions and billions of years and uh, uniformitarianism and so on can produce all the uh, the things that we see around us in uh, in our world. Mm. And of course, what we uh, what we uh, we do at CMI, we we look at those things and we point out the uh, the flaws in in that sort of uh, belief. And uh, really, uh, you know, there was another excellent article on the CMI website, written by a um, uh, one of the American geomorphologists mm-hmm. by, called Michael Ord. Now. Uh, Our regular listeners will know that we've had our resident Australian expert geomorphologist, Dr. Ron Neller, Mm -hmm. on this program. And, I mean, Ron is a a great example of a bloke who uh, 
uh, was working in the field of geomorphology, you know, the structures and things all around you in the, uh, the world. And uh, what he was taught didn't make sense with what he actually saw. Mm-hmm. And he eventually uh, became a Christian because he, uh, he realized that the only thing that uh, did make sense was what the Bible actually says. Mm-hmm. And uh, this particular article on the, the, the website, worth a read if uh, people want to uh, do it, because the geomorphologists around the world, uh, they, they cannot make what they see fit with the supposed millions of years uh, slow and steady processes that they they believe in. Mm. And really, uh, uh, they, they can't explain how uh, the mountains got to be the way they are, how the uh, plateaus and canyons and all the other structures that they see in the world, uh, they, they can't work out how their uniformitarian, slow and steady processes could have built them all, because they can't. Mm. And really, uh, the only thing that uh, makes, uh, the only explanation that makes sense is how the, uh, the mountain ranges were lifted up and the canyons were carved by torrential water runoff that mm. followed the uh, flood of Noah. Yep. And I mean, that's exactly what the Bible has always said for three and a half thousand years. It hasn't changed. And, uh, and yet, everything that we see around us fits in with, uh, with what the Bible tells us. Yeah. And they're the sort of things that uh, we dedicate ourselves at Creation Ministries to pointing out, you know, yep. that the only thing that really makes sense is the truth of, uh, of the Bible. And uh, I was uh, I was really stoked listening last week to uh, to Taz Walker. You had Taz on last week, yes. And uh, he was uh, he he explained Creation Ministry's position really very well. I thought, and he pointed out that the personal peace and freedom that uh, Christian believers can enjoy uh, uh, that's that's really only available to you when you recognise that. Uh, Everything makes sense in the light of what the Bible says. Yep. Now, you get uh, so many of the uh, evolutionists and atheists saying nothing makes sense except in the light of evolution. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just nonsense. You know, uh, when they try and explain it in the, the, uh, 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 with evolution and long ages as a foundation, it just doesn't make sense, even though they want to believe it. Yeah. And and they really typify the uh, sort of person you um, that's described in Romans one. You know, professing to be wise, they became fools and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, mm. uh, because what the creator said he did, everything that we see around us fits in with that. And uh, and Taz put it uh, really very well. And. Uh, uh, when we say we take the Bible uh, literally true historically, then peace and security really does flow from that. Yep. You know, and and uh, uh, Christians really should be the uh, people at greatest peace and uh, and security of any group of people in the world, uh, because we're not governed by. Uh, 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 you know, you know the uh, fickle, temporary beliefs of of man. We're dependent on a uh, set of books that uh, claim to be the word of God. And when you look at them, they uh, they stand up. They don't have uh, flaws in them. They make sense, and uh, uh, it really is a a, a fantastic foundation for a, a personal philosophy. And the uh, the peace and security that flows from that's fantastic. Dr. John, we've had a question come in. Uh, Good afternoon, Dr. John. How does Dawkins explain mankind's capacity for cognition, the ability to think, reason, hear and understand another human being, draw conclusion, making decisions, etc.? And secondly, the human spirit, which is obviously outside instincts as we can make decisions that are opposite to emotions. For example, being angry about something a choice to not follow through on those emotions. It's a uh, pretty lengthy, <laughs> pretty lengthy question. It is, uh, but 
the fact is they do explain it by uh, the interaction of uh, electrons and uh, Im- uh, chemical impulses and all these sort of things going on in your brain. And yet uh, it, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, explain why so many cultures have really had a sense of the uh, the spirit world, mm. and I mean, when we uh, when we look around us, uh, we we can see, uh, as Christians anyway, the influence of the uh, the spirit world. Well, somebody like Dawkins has to deny uh, that, but they have to deny the um, uh, the, the findings and the uh, the the testimonies of so many people that would be contrary to what they believe. Yeah. You know, they're saying, for example, that um, uh, all of the um, New Testament writers, for example, were deluded. Now, they have to be saying that because mm. uh, they think the things are only the interaction of uh, electrons and so on. But what about uh, somebody like uh, the Apostle John, right? Now, he was a companion of Jesus, and of course they've got to deny that uh, Jesus was who he claimed to be. Mm. But the Apostle John says that um, uh, there are so many other things written in the, uh, his book, the uh, Gospel of John, that Jesus did, that the whole world couldn't contain the number of books that could be written. Yeah. Now, that's a pretty astonishing statement. Mm. And uh, uh, of course, John says that he wrote those so that might, we might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Yeah. That is the person uh, specifically sent out from God to explain and uh, uh, the things that he explained and to do the things that he did. Yep. Now, uh, Dawkins has to deny that. See, he has to deny the uh, Apostle Paul. Three times the Apostle Paul talks about what happened to him on the road of Damascus, uh, the road to Damascus. Well, Dawkins has to be saying, well, Paul's a liar, didn't really happen that way. Mm -hmm. Or John's a liar, you know, didn't really happen that way. So, uh, you know, where would you be in our society if you couldn't uh, rely on the testimony of eyewitnesses. I mean, our whole legal system would uh, would fall over, wouldn't yes. it? You know, yep. uh, uh, we have uh, twelve people sitting up there as a jury, and they hear the uh, the testimony of uh, witnesses, and they come to their decision based on whether or not they think those witnesses are telling the truth. Yep. Now, uh, Dawkins is saying that all of these witnesses in the New Testament are not telling the truth. They're delusional. Mm. You know, well... There was uh, hundreds that saw Jesus. Uh, it, well, uh, even after his resurrection, yeah. Paul tells us that 500 people at once, yeah. and most of them were still alive. Yep. So, yeah, you know, you've got to be able... <laughs> I mean... We, we absolutely rely on that right throughout our society on the testimony of eyewitnesses. Mm. You know, where would we be without that? Yep. You know, and, and yet uh, Dawkins is, uh, is saying, well, no, the eyewitnesses can't be trusted. It's only the interaction of electrons and neutrons and protons and so on. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, maybe that answers our li- listeners' question, but mm-hmm. uh, uh, that's really what they're saying. No, yep. no, you're all deluded. Mm. We're the only ones who aren't. Yes, yes. Yes, and we know it's the other way around, <laughs> Dr. John. Thank you. Another awesome week, and uh, you'll be back with us next I week. I will, yeah. I'll be here again next week, and then I'll have another break after that, <laughs> and uh, you'll be able to listen to a few other uh, speakers. So, yeah, no, I think it's great that we've got all this uh, variety and uh, I, I really enjoy coming here and I enjoy listening to the other speakers. I learn a lot from them. Oh, so do I. Mm. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Dr. John. You are on 94.9. If you do have any questions for Dr. John next week, please send them through to our text line 0401 949 949.